Okay, so how are we going to make a, this ring of Sauron, right? Our precious little ring. Well, it's gonna be very easy. And I think if you're a beginner, you're gonna have a very fun and easy time creating this. So let's just start creating it. First thing we need to do is just delete this cube. We can delete it. And I'm going to add a cylinder. A cylinder is way more of a ring shape and that is why we're going to use it. And with this, I want to change the dimensions a little bit. So I'm going into item and I'm going to change the dimensions. I'm not going through all the hassle of making this a millimeters, but I'm just going to put this to 0.16 and this also to 0.16. Now we're going to change this Z axis. So scale Z and I'm going to put this around 0.04. Four. So this is the like the width of our ring. We have a diameter, and that's essentially where our uh, finger goes in. Now that we have the size, we can delete this top and bottom face, so X faces, and we can play around with this geometry. So I want to go into edit mode, and I want to make this solid because now it's just a yeah flat little piece, right? We don't want that. So if you click on A to select everything, so let's extrude it, A, and then I'm going to click on right click, that snaps it back into place, and I'm going to click on scale, so S for scale. The problem with just scaling it like this, it will also scale around the Z axis, and we do not want that, there, we do not have like a ring shape like that, right? So what I'm going to do is, uh, we go, let's go one, uh, let's go one step back. Control Z and let's scale it again, but let's do S Shift Z. So what Shift essentially says is scale and then Shift. Do not scale around the axis that you choose. So scale Shift Z. Scale around every axis except the Z axis. Okay. So here we have our thickness. Very cool. Now I want to add three edge loops here. And let's do it also here in uh, the inside. And with this edge loops, I want to make it a little bit more round. So if we look at some of the images that we have, um, this is not really a good one, but um, also if you look at the movie, it is a little bit nice and uh, curved, right? So we want to recreate that. And the way that we do, are gonna do this is we're just gonna select this whole edge loop and then scale it up. Also do Shift Z, remember, Scale, Shift Z. And then select these two edge loops, Scale, Shift Z. And now we have a nice and uh, rounded shape. Very, very cool. So you can see that it's fairly blocky and we do not have a lot of geometry. So let's go here into our modifiers. Click on Add Modifier and add a subdivision surface. So now you can see that it gets smooth, which is very good. And if we add more subdivisions here, you can see that it gets smoother and smoother, but there are still uh, yeah, a fair amount of these sharper edges in here, which we do not really want, right? So how do we get rid of those? Well, it's actually very easy. If you just select the model that you want to make smooth, click on W and then Shade Smooth. Now you can see that we have a very nice uh, smooth shading in here. So um, yeah, this way you don't have to go too high with your subdivisions and because they are very heavy on your computer, let's say. Very, very cool. So this is our ring. Let's also add something where the ring will be laying on. So Shift A, and we're gonna add a plane and we're gonna move this plane so uh, the ring is laying on top of it. And yeah, we're just gonna give this plane later on some nice materials that it looks like the map from uh, Lord of the Rings. Now we of course also want to add this this Elvis inscription in here. And it is uh, quite easy actually, but before you can do that, we need to UV unwrap our model. And it sounds very scary, but it is not that scary. Let's just go here into UV editing. And here is our UV map, let's say. So if we go in here, we're going to select this top two edge loops and then also this bottom ones. We cannot see them because of the plane, so I'm going to hide the plane off first. Select the bottom ones 
and then I want to add one more edge loop which will be on the back so I'm gonna click on one which is our front view but I want the back view if you click on control one you will end up in the back view and now I'm gonna select this whole edge loop and that will be the uh, the last edge loop that we need click ctrl e and push mark seam so now we can see that we have these red uh, seams on here now if you select everything click on u and click on unwrap we can see that everything gets unwrapped but we do have an error the error says object has a non-uniform scale and this can be resolved very easily if you just go into top go into like back into object mode click on ctrl a and then you can apply the scale. So now if we UV unwrap this, we do not have this error and everything will be UV unwrapped accordingly to the scale that the model has right now. Very, very handy. So let's go in back to our layout and we want to add our materials, right? So I'm gonna move this bit up and change it to the shader editor. Here we can just add a new material and uh, this is all uh, very nice, but I want our materials to be a little bit more realistic than we can see uh, right here. When you start Blender, you're automatically in the render engine, which is called EV. If you go here to render properties, you can see that our render engine is EV. And we're going to change this to cycles. This is just for a little bit more realistic uh, models, and that is why I use it. Uh, for the device, I actually want to use our, my GPU. This depends what is better on your PC, but with most of the PCs that I see nowadays, the GPU will be used uh, uh, mostly. If you use a GPU, I do advise you go into the performance and change the styles to 256. This just works way better with the GPU. If you work with the CPU, keep these tiles lower. Okay, let's go back to our model. Here we have our material. And we want more of a golden material, right? So if we go here, we can create a little bit of a nice golden material. And you can see that the color is yeah, yellowish, which is gold, yellowish orange. But it doesn't look like gold at all. This is because the gold is also a metal. And right now we do not have this metallic on. So let's put this metal all the way at 1. And here we already get a way better result. So let's say we have this uh, golden metal. We want to make it way more shiny, right? Glossy. So I'm going to put this roughness to 0.1. And now it's a nice and glossy material. Why doesn't it look realistic yet? This is essentially because we do not have any uh, amazing lighting in here. And we're going to change that later. So let's go on and create some of this text in here. We already created our UV maps, but now we of course need some text. So if I add a image texture in here, shift A, add image texture, we can open to download the resources needed for our tutorials. Just go to the link or 3dschool.teachable.com, scroll down and go to the resource pack. Enroll in the course for free, then select the tutorial that you are using and download all the files. Our text. Open image. And let's check if our text is there. So put color into the base color and here we have our text. Our text does look very weird though, right? So we want to change something. What is this? Well, essentially if we go to the UV editing, you can see that our UVs are not optimized for this particular texture. So what I want to do is I am going to UV unwrap it again, select everything, U unwrap, and uh, you can see that they are very small, our li little UVs. So I'm going to select uh, one of these here and then click on Ctrl plus. This will expand my selection. And now I have uh, one part of this. If you actually go here into your material shading, we can see that if I move this over, that we have something changing here, which is the text. So I'm going to rotate this for 90 degrees and I'm going to scale this way up. And here we can see that our text, uh, you know, pops up. So wherever I move my UVs, you can see that the text is. So um, yeah, let's make sure the size is good. here 
And we also need to, need to do this for uh, this one. So I'm going to select this also. Rotate it for 90 degrees. And let's scale it a very nice up. Awesome. So here is our text. Very, very cool. And make sure that these here are not in the text. Okay. Because those are the top and the bottom and there will be not any text on top of uh, yeah, these, uh, this geometry. So let's go back into our layout. And here we have our text. The only thing that is the problem is that the text should be a little bit emissive, right? We want some light to be shown there. Uh, maybe, maybe a little bit like this. You can see here. So how do we do this? Well, we're going to use this instead of a color, we're going to use this as a mask. So let's grab, first of all, an emission node in here, a mission. And if we put this in the surface, this will just emit light from our uh, model. But we need to mix this. So we're going to grab a mix shader. We're going to mix this with our principal shader. And what this mix node does, it mixes this node with this one. And essentially what you can do with this fact, you can move it around. And what it does is at zero, it uses at first shader. As you can see, now it's all the way our uh, golden material. And at one, it will be the emission shader, right? The second shader. So all in between here will be a mix um, according to the number. And we only want our elvish text to be emitted. And you can see that the, the, like, the map that I made is black or white. And what we can do is we can use this as a mask. So if I put this color, this black and white map into the fact now you can see that we just need to change these two shaders and everything that is white in this case will be uh, the, the golden material and everything that is black, as you can see here, will be the, emis the emission. And you can change, of course, all of these still. You can change the material, but uh, that is how that works. So. Um, yeah, the emission will be around uh, this color and you can even put the strength a little bit up if you would like to. And that is the text inside of our model. So if we look at my final image, we can see that I have my ring laying on top of something here, which is a map. So remember the plane that we've made before. We can literally just grab this plane, create a new material for it and uh, put a image texture into the base color, which is going to be our world map dot JPEG open and here is the map very very cool so I didn't think this looked realistic enough I also wanted to add a normal map so image texture and this image texture is going to be into the normal but you can see that this color this little dot after it is yellow and the color in the normal map is uh, purple so these do not really match together we need to add something in between it, which is called the normal map. And you can just uh, put it in here. And now you can see that the color goes into color, which is yellow. And then the output will be a normal map, which is purple. And it goes perfectly into this normal map. So let's open our normal map. And we're going to open the fabric normal here. And the last thing that we need to change inside this is put this color space to non-color. Okay. So we have some high details. In my opinion, they are a little bit too big. Like the fabric would be way too big if you uh, actually create it like this. So what I want to do is I'm going to add a mapping node in here, put the factor into the factor, and you can see that everything is just lost. Why is that? That is because we need also need to add a texture coordination node in here. Make sure the UVs goes into the factor and now everything is back and we can ch change the scale. So I'm just gonna put the scale up. Let's do it like seven, seven and seven. And here we have some nice detail. It's some something extra and yeah, it's not too much. It looks realistic. So I think I'm happy with this. So let's keep it at this for right now. Next thing we have our camera. If we click on zero, we have a camera. 
and if you go to the view you can actually lock the camera to a certain view so if I select this so enable view navigation with the camera view you can see that around this camera we get some red dots right and now if you just move wherever you look the camera moves with you so that is kind of a great way to move your camera around and let's say I want to make our render from this point here now the only thing that you have to do is make sure you turn this off again so you don't move it by accident and yeah that is our camera view very very cool so in my opinion this whole scene is a little bit too bright um, as you can see in my uh, final image yeah it's all a little bit darker and the only thing that really pops is this elfish text, right? So how do we recreate that? Well, I want to go here and change this from object to world. And in our world, we can actually also add something. So we can add a environment texture here. Color goes into the color. And let's open our environment texture. We're going to open it and we're going to open our HDRI. And let's uh, select the Epping Forest. Select it, open image. This might take a little while, but here we have, um, if you look around, you can see that all around here we have a light source, which creates very realistic results, especially in our reflections. But it's a little bit too bright, so I'm gonna put this strength down to like 0.1, maybe a little bit higher, 0.2. And yeah that already dims down the light uh, but it makes it look very realistic right next thing the light that is always already in our scene i'm going to delete that one because i do not really like it and here we have a uh, yeah we're getting a decent result i personally did not like the way that this text also influenced the surroundings so if you go back to object you can see that if i put the strength down or up that it also brightens the amount of uh, you know the map and all that stuff and I personally did not like that so one way around this is if you select this uh, ring we need to add a light path node by the way this is optional if you think this goes too far just skip this mm -hmm. but with this light path we can put the is camera ray into the strength so now it will only show up in the camera and will not reflect on everything else it is a little bit uh, dimmed, so if you want to make it more bright, you can add a math node here and put this add to multiply. And now you can just multiply it to 2. You can see that it, you can make it as bright as you want. So if I put it to 10, it gets very, very nice and bright, but it will not interact with anything else. So I'm just going to put this to 3 for right now. And yeah, it looks uh, quite, quite cool. I, uh, maybe even lower, maybe 2.5, something like that. And you can always change this color, right? So you can put it a little bit more to red if you would like to. Um. So the only thing you guys have to do is click on F12 and you have you made your own Sauron ring. Um, I hope you guys learned a lot from this. And if there is anything that you want to learn or anything that you want to say or ask, please put it down in the comments below. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. <laughs>